Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Morning Hustle. This young lady you're about to start seeing everywhere. Her new movie, On the Come Up, is streaming on Paramount Plus starts September 26th, and you can see it in selected theaters. So be sure you pull up on that. One time for Jamila Gray! <laughs> young lady! Uh, first and foremost, gotta say, you did your thing in this Thank movie. You. Crazy. Like, by the time it was all done, we didn't know if, like, yo, man, like, should I, like, look for the soundtrack now? Because, mm. yo, the, the bars was there. Like, how long have you, like, have you a fan of battle rap? Let's start with that. Um, This movie made me a fan of battle rap. So before, I didn't really know much about the culture, but to get into the character, I studied a lot of it. Specifically, this one on YouTube called Queen of the Ring. Yes. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Babs Bunny. Yeah, That's my homegirl. Yeah. They're good. So I watched a lot of them. Um, I would start seeing a lot of it on TikTok with the algorithm because I was watching so much of it. And I realized, wow, it's like a whole different art. It's like a sport, for real. And mm -hmm. I was like, this is really cool. So the movie really got me into battle rap. So Rhapsody has a lot to do with the lyrics and the yes. poetry that goes on during the, the movie. But who were you a big fan of when it came to the battle rap? Like, who did you lean more towards when it came for you watching and researching? Um, I watched, uh, like I said, Queen of the Ring. I watched Tori Doe. Tori, though, okay. Yeah, I watched her. Mm -hmm. And um, Sanaa, she was one of the people, she pointed out Tori Doe to me because she was like, this is who um, Brie reminds me of. Yeah. So I really studied her a That's lot. That's fire. Yeah. Yeah. And not only did you study, it seemed like you mastered the craft mm -hmm. by the time we're watching you by the end of the movie because, like, battle rap is all about performances, which, you know, mm -hmm. lends itself to the acting ability because the way you sold the emotion... Mm -hmm. I think even the, the the toughest battle rap fan will watch this and be like, all right, she did her due diligence. Would you ever feel confident enough to jump in there for real, for real? Let's just say if somebody gave you like six months, right? You know, to try to get it together. Could you see yourself doing that? Um, oof. I think that, I think the performance part, yeah. But the lyrics, though... The way they put words together is different. Mm -hmm. Even just the way that Rhapsody wrote it is different. I don't know if I can come up with puns like that. It's going to take me some years to, <laughs> to work that out. Yo, Rhapsody is a special breed, she and is. I hope this gives her mo even more credit in the game because like, she's been talented this whole time. Mm -hmm. yes. You know what I mean? So big ups to you and her. Yeah, and you're definitely talented. So Thank we you. see that throughout the movie, and we see you just shine. And... Sinai. This is her first directorial debut, mm -hmm. and she decided to pick you as her star. How did that happen? Did you audition? Did you already know her? How did y'all get linked up? So, it, the way it happened kind of felt like just destiny, honestly. Um, I did the audition in February of 2021, and you do a lot of auditions. Some, a lot of times you don't hear back. So, with that one, I didn't hear back, and I was just like, okay, whatever. Um, six months pass, and then my agent calls me, and I guess the production had undergone like some changes, different network, different director, um, and the role of Brie was already cast, but they wanted to recast. Mm. So they went back through like all the old auditions, and they and mine was one of the ones that they pulled. So wow! They, and they were like, "Yeah, we want to bring her in um, for a reading with Sana and um, have her audition." So. I had to prepare 16 bars um, and learn the sides that I did during my first audition. Came in, Sanaa actually, um, she helped me like set up, cause I guess they they were really like looking at mine. Like they were like, she's one of the ones. That's what Angie said. She was like, she's the one. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Sanaa helped me with my tech beforehand. So, cause we did it over Zoom. Oh, right, um, okay. So she would like, Help me adjust my lighting before the actual day. Um, and then we went she ahead. She knew and she taped wanted it. you. Yeah. <laughs> we taped it, and um, that was it. I heard back about a month later, and they were like, We want you for the role. Yo, that's dope. Now, who did you take a job from? Because, like, yeah, I know, I was waiting for you. Because this person that. had the gig, and you were so good that you unseated that person. I don't know. I don't know. 
I but they know. never told you at all? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It happened the way it happened. <laughs> Yo, there was a lot of standout moments that shocked me, man. Like, I mean, first of all, you are a physical person because the way, you know, this is, and I don't want to get too much about the movie, but, you know, you, you took your bumps and bruises, not yeah. only lyrically, mm -hmm. but also physically in the film. And little Yachty, of all people, <laughs> will blow you away yeah. <laughs> in this movie by what you see him do later on. And, like, who shocked you the most? Because I know you've probably seen some of these people work before, but, like, who completely blew your mind as far as them stepping out of character? Lil Yachty. Mm -hmm. Lil Yachty, really. I, the thing about it is, I think he came in, like, as the underdog. Mm -hmm. He came in because he had never done a role like this before, and he's new to act and I think he had only done like maybe two projects before well, it was a how high how high, I think. Two, how high and, yeah. and, and, and it was and something it was about like a one. backstage thing I think he had a yeah. cameo in like a Netflix movie I remember movie. that thing. yeah but he really he really just did an amazing job in this movie and I hope that from this point on he gets booked more because he really did that like you said really you showed up that. with 16 bars right yeah who helped you write those 16 bars if you're not a rapper <laughs> Well, his name is Jelani Imani. He's one of the greatest artists in Atlanta. Check him out underground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, Shout out to Jelani. He was, he was my rap coach before uh, Rhapsody, so he really helped me prepare for the audition. Rap coach and boyfriend. And boyfriend, Okay, yes. just to make it sure. Because yes. yes. <laughs> I'm like, and y'all been together for quite some time. Uh, nine years. Wow. You don't look like you're old enough to have done anything for nine years. <laughs> Man. Black Yo, don't crack. Good Yo, jeans. Cocoa yeah. butter, all that stuff. Living good. <laughs> Yes. Because <laughs> you're playing a 16-year-old, if I'm yes. not mistaken, but you're not 16. Mm -mm. Nowhere near 16. You're yeah, no. 20. Yeah, I'm in my early 20s. Look, that's crazy. Black don't crack, child. Uh, don't oh, crack. man. <laughs> you know, there is uh, a lot of takeaways that could be had in this film. Like, you know, when people watch mm -hmm. on The Come Up, what do you want people to leave the experience with when it's all said and done? Well, I would say um, there's a few things. One of the big things I pulled was don't compromise your integrity. No mm. matter how desperate you get, there's always a better opportunity that's more suited toward you than just taking the first one to, you know, for some money. And then two, um, don't be ashamed of where you come from and who you are. You come from a music background, not mm -hmm. necessarily rap, but you DJ'd. Mm -hmm. Are you still DJ? Yes. So tell us a little bit about that, because some people might be shocked to even know that. Oh uh, yeah, I've been DJing for about uh, maybe almost two, no, about two years now. Um, and it was something that kind of just fell into my lap. Yeah. I was playing around with this tiny DJ board, and my friend, shout out her, her name is uh, Unique Genie on Instagram. Everybody go follow her right now. <laughs> uh, she DM'd me, and she was like, you want me to teach you how to DJ? And I was like... Uh, sure. And then she booked me for a party. Like what? That, yeah, she taught me how to DJ, and then she booked me for a party that same week. Wow. That's yeah. a lot of pressure. That's a good friend, too. Yeah, and she, got... she, she's a really great friend, and she let me use her board for the party. Really? Yeah, and I've been getting booked ever since. Come through, super friend. So what was more scary for you, DJing your first party after only knowing how to DJ for a week or going on your first audition? I think... Uh, DJ, uh, well, mm. going on my first audition, probably. But I've been doing theater um, since I was, like, a kid, so we would have to audition all the time. And um, I went to a performing arts high school, so every audition still is scary for me, whereas mm. DJing is kind of, like, more of a fun thing, especially because, you know, you can get drunk and, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's right. it. Is there a role that we may be familiar with that you went for but didn't get? Oh. Uh, Oof. Because I know Head Crack actually auditioned for your movie. <laughs> he was supposed to be... He yo, was they, went, they went with some unknown dude named Mike Epps. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo. <laughs> yo. I, I did a virtual... Or did, not a virtual audition, but like I recorded my thing, turned because I used to host battle raps, and, I, and the crazy thing, I have a radio show too, right? So, oh man, this movie was tailor-made for me. Right? <laughs> and then like I got a, a, a email back a couple weeks later. It's like, yeah, they went a different direction. I'm like, word. Man, they probably got Charlemagne or something. Oh and then my when God. I saw the thing, it was like, 
Mike Epps. <laughs> you know, the but... only thing I'll say about Mike Epps is he was able to be such an asshole towards mm-hmm. you in that interview. And I feel like Headcrack's more of a nice guy. Yeah. Not saying that you couldn't be the actor. I could it's definitely me. be. Like, but I just got this Mike, boxing. Like. But Mike Epps, well, that doesn't mean anything. There's nice boxers that were nice people that could fight with Mike Punch Epps. Punch in the face gave, kindly? They gave, like, he gave the asshole vibe he right did. there. He was pretty, he pretty did harsh a good on job. you. He, he was. did a good job. <laughs> That's the comedic side of Mike. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, Mike is a talent. And I love to see when he gets to be more than jokey, jokey Mike Epps. You know what I mean? So I never hate on another man's blessing. But I was like, damn, if there was ever a part that was kind of tailor-made for the life that I lead. You know what I'm saying? It was that. However, it didn't. The movie was incredible. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, talk about the rest of your cast, too. I mean, you got Method Man, who the mm-hmm. ladies love, yeah. right? Like, were there extra people on the set the days that Method Man was there? Because, you know, like, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. chicks is jocking. <laughs> the extras were going crazy for Method Man. <laughs> Some of the crew was bringing, like, CDs and stuff for him to sign. Really? Like, yeah. Method Man, yeah. So even though you're well-versed in theater, was that a little intimidating, having Sinai there, having Method Man, Yachty, people that have, you know, mm-hmm. been in this space for quite some time? Oh, yeah, uh, for sure, because I think that you you have to learn so much. You just have to be open to learn because that was my first time on a set that big and mm-hmm. running a set that big. So mm-hmm. there was a lot to learn, and I think that um, I just I learned a lot during the process of, of filming. So, yeah, it, it at first it was definitely intimidating and you just have to have a lot of trust in yourself. Mm-hmm. And, and I had a lot of good people around me that were willing to teach me, so that was good. Can you can you help me a head crack out yeah. just a little bit? We don't know where the hell this movie... <laughs> is this in Chicago? Somewhere in America. <laughs> Yo, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't us, I man. Like, wait, Atlanta. And it's like I did have a, I did have a gummy before I watched it, but like, I, I was confused as to where it was taking place at. Yeah, it didn't have us. So Garden Heights is like a made up room. It's the okay. same place that the Hate You Give took place. It's like the same made up world, but okay. they wanted it to have like a up north kind of esque, <laughs> like kind of New York, but yeah. also kind of like. Chicago, like, yeah, it, feel. I gave it gave Detroit, Chicago, more than New York to me. A little bit of Philly, yeah. a little Philly, right? Yeah. When you said you was going to the A, I was like, you know what? Maybe it's Arkansas. Yeah. I, was like, I, like, <laughs> I thought it was the outskirts in, in Georgia. I was like, and I even Googled it, the the Garden, uh, Garden Heights. Heights, and it is a place in Georgia named is Garden it? Heights. Yeah, but it's not in Atlanta. Kind of uh-huh. like, because you're not from Atlanta, but you're kind of from Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like that. So it was, the cool part about that is anybody watching it could feel like, ah, oh, this is the hometown. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was a vibe there. Now, another character that really, like, you know, like tugged at my heart was Aunt Pooh. Oh, Everybody yes. got an Aunt Pooh. Yeah. Somebody's yes. a little rough around the edges. They mean well, but maybe this isn't the person who's going to get you where you need to go. Who is your Aunt Pooh in real life? Who is my Aunt Pooh? <laughs> Let me see, who is my Aunt Pooh in real life? Well, what sucks is my whole family is in Alabama. So, Aww. yeah, I live, my immediate family is here, but the rest of my family is there. I think that I've had an Aunt Pooh more so in friendships than I have, like, in my actual family. Mm. If gotcha. that makes sense. Yeah, not everybody's always equipped for the trip, but they're there for a season in your life to get you to a certain point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Your new yeah. Aunt Pooh might be Rhapsody, because I see that right. she, <laughs> yeah. she comments under a lot of your stuff. Did yes. y'all grow a bond and a relationship from oh, filming? Oh, yes, that? yeah. Rhapsody is like, she's like my homegirl now. Mm-hmm. Like, we, our birthday is a few days apart. We have Dope. the same family dynamic. Like, she's the youngest of three sisters, and she has a younger brother, so am I. Like, we are like... Me and her are like this. That's crazy. So you did uh, get some new friendships from doing this film. Oh, yeah. Definitely with the cast, uh, working with Miles and Michael and um, Sana, just everybody. I think the whole cast is was like a family. It's crazy because it does put you in the mind frame of the hate you give, and it's the same direct. No, not director. Same writer. Not, who wrote same the book. writer. Same yeah. writer. So it does, and I really love. I love the story, and I love how you shined in the film. It's gonna. People are gonna love you in this. 
It's really for exciting. Real. It's really so exciting. As this star, you know, continues to rise, right? I mean, because like you know, you, you did this movie. It's mm-hmm. like you know, something for the culture, something that's gonna stick around for a while. Because if you think this is Eight Mile Part Two, no, that it is not. This movie stands on its own. But okay, so let's just say <laughs> you're eight na- miles and an eight mile. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and when you ate shorty up outside in front of the, the, the spot too, oh, there's so that many to moments. Be sweetie? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it was giving like Cardi Minaj vibes, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah, sweetie, because with the lollipop and everything, that's very sweetie-ish. But let's just say like, you know, <laughs> your next role, right? Mm-hmm. It Maybe it's something a little bit more sultry, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how does the relationship deal with like, you know, the attention that, you know, mm-hmm. you guys both get? Because, you know, you guys out there doing music. Mm-hmm. You're out here on film. You're also DJing parties. Let's just say if you had to do a love scene. For your next movie. Well, she had a little mini love scene yeah. when they was kissing and stuff by the pool. I know, but this you can show this on like television. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, but like, let's just say if it went she deeper than that. How do y'all <laughs> handle those conversations, mm-hmm. like you know, in preparation for it? You know. Well, I think at the end of the day, you got to understand that it's it's part of the job, and I would never do anything that I'm against. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, Game of Thrones, it'd just be just a bunch of sex scenes. You know? I wouldn't do anything that didn't add to the plot line of the story. Okay. Got you. Like, let's just say if you got casted in Euphoria, which, (sighs) oh my God. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can see her in Euphoria, though. Cast me in Euphoria, please. (laughs) (laughs) But can't get me in you being casted in Euphoria because people be having sex in Euphoria that you Mm -hmm. don't even expect to do anything in Euphoria. Yeah, Jelani, listen, Jelani is strong, and he understands that this is part of the job. It's It's acting. acting, At the end of the day, when I go home, I'm not thinking about this other person, or I'm not planning on having sex with this Mm -hmm. other person. You know, it just is what it is. You know, sometimes with the white actors, they be falling in love on set, and then they be leaving behind their whole family. Shout out to Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt is exactly who I was thinking when I said it. So sometimes, you know, that does happen. But Mm -hmm. when you have, like, a strong support system behind you, I think that's things that you could get through. And I also can't see you doing power where you're just like, just because, but no no reason. Like, I just can't. No, well, no. growing up, I just can't see that. No. What can we see you doing next, though? Um, ooh. Manifest your role. <laughs> I think the perfect role. I, I've always wanted to do a timepiece. Mm. So, like, something historical, maybe like the 50s. Um, mm. Also, like, the 1980s. But, like, something that stamps, like, history or, like, you know, something right. like that. right. But not too far back like Bridgerton? Not too far back. <laughs> More so like a snowfall. Okay. Yes. You know, I would love to do something like that. Mm-hmm. And if you had to pick your role for like anybody, you know, they had to do a lot of movies like Whitney. They're doing mm-hmm. a Whitney movie over. Who's someone you think you would want to portray in like a biopic? Eartha Kid. Oh, wow. that would be a that's perfect. I, I love see it. it. <laughs> like, has anybody told you that you look like Eartha Kitt before? Or is this just something you thought about? No, I just I'm just a fan. I love Eartha Kitt. Oh, I could definitely. See when I was that. a kid, when she would be Catwoman on Batman, because it was two Catwomen on mm-hmm. Batman. For those that don't know, it was a black one and a white one. Whatever right. it would be Eartha, I'd be like, I was more leaned in <laughs> on that yeah. one. You know what I mean? <laughs> there was a sultriness of uh, you know about her that just really like bled through, and it was hard yes. to do that back then because they was trying to, you know, tone down the sexuality mm-hmm. of a lot of characters, but mm-hmm. you could you can't block the shining on her. You can. You she is a powerhouse. Listen, I love her. Everything she's done. And I grew up, I think I found out about her from Disney Channel. Really? really? Yeah, when I was younger, she was on Crunk's New Groove. That's how I found out about her. Whoa. I, I didn't legit think thought about you was gonna that. say boomerang, but you know <laughs> <laughs> I, I found out about boomerang after the Okay. Fact. My kiss. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Well, I will say you did a beautiful job in this movie. I yes. cannot wait for the culture to see it, mm-hmm. absorb it. And go to the movie theaters, y'all. Go spend some money. I think going to the movie theater is going to be the best way that you can ever go mm-hmm. and see this film. If not, Paramount Plus is is the second. Back, that's a backup. But the movie theater should be first and foremost. Yes. Yeah. To see us on the screen. Yes. Yeah, our beautiful sister. Stimulate that economy, man. Put <laughs> yes. money back in the system. One time for Jamila Gray.